Hi everybody, I'm back and I have two more experiments for your States of Matter unit. Um, feel free after watching this video, if you see that they fit into a different part of your curriculum, to definitely use this wherever it works. Um, these experiments are designed to be budget friendly and to give you high engagement in your classroom. Um, the first experiment that I'm going to do is going to involve stuff that you probably have in your kitchen, so you may not even have to go shopping for this. And those are the types of experiments that I love because I have the resources already in my house. I can just bring it in for the day, use it, and then I'm good to go. Um, these experiments can be done as a classroom demonstration. The first one I'm, that I'm going to show you, that's how I would... Um, that's how I've always done it. I've always had it so that I was doing this one, but you certainly, depending on the structure of your classroom, you could always put these into stations and have the students do that there independently. Um, you know you know your classroom best and what materials you have access to. So the first one that we're going to do is has to do with um, different layers of materials and how they will layer into something. So what I have is I have a, a clear glass, anything that's clear. If you want to use a clear plastic cup, you can use that also if you're worried about this breaking, but you need something that's clear so that the students will be able to see the different layers. I'm also going to use some water. Um, I have some cooking oil and then also some maple syrup. And then what you're going to do, I also give my students um, a worksheet to go along with this. And on the worksheet, I, it lists the materials that they need to have, which are the materials that we just went over, and then the procedure. The procedure says to fill the jar with one-third cup, uh, or I'm sorry, with one-third cooking oil, one-third water, and one-third maple syrup. You want to pour slowly and observe. Now, you don't want to go to the tippy-tippy top of here, so, you know, you can eyeball it. If you wanted to do one-third of a cup and have your students measure that, you certainly can do that but I just kind of eyeball it so that it is going to, you know, have equal layers. So I'm going to take my cooking oil. I'm just gonna move this back a little so that you can see. I'm going to pour in the cooking oil first because this is a big bottle, so I want to get this out of the way so I don't spill it. see that I haven't filled up about that much so now I want to fill up the rest about that much and again if you want to be more scientific and you want students to measure this out you can always do that also and then so now it looks like this and you can see that they've already formed their layers and now students would make predictions about you know when you're doing this you can ask them what they think is going to happen with these materials and why. And this is where I think density can come into play because the density of these three liquids is what's going to help it form the, those layers. Now, I use this when we're talking about states of matter because a lot of students just think that if something is a liquid, um, they will, sometimes they think that they're all going to mix with one another. There's a lot of misconceptions that they have. So I like that for them to see that even though there are three different liquids, the liquids have different consistencies and those consistencies are what is going to make it um, layer. So you'll see that we have the maple syrup at the bottom and then I don't know if you can see, but we have in the middle is the cooking oil and then it's kind of bubbly. And then above the cooking oil is the water. So this is a great visual for the students to see. An another thing that you could do thinking about this now if you really want to be able to delineate between the layers is you could put food coloring in the water. So if I had food coloring that I poured in here, maybe using the red color, it, you would really be able to see the differences. But I can see this. I just don't know if it's showing through so well on the video, but I think you get the idea. And then what the students would do was they would fill in their observations and that's where they can draw and label what they see ha that happens. And then they would um, state, list the states of matter, so they should know that these three are all liquids, tell which um, order the liquids fell, um, fall in, and then they want, you want to talk about the amount of matter that an object has. Um, you know, so students know that 
different objects have different amounts of matter in them and that's what is going to give them the density that they have here. So that is the first activity. And again, this is something that is relatively simple. You could also, if you don't have access to these three um, liquids, you could play around and use different liquids in here as well. You would just want to make sure that you're going to get that layered effect for them to see. But you know, if you don't, you, you can substitute any sort of oil. This is canola oil, but any sort of cooking oil would work. And then you would just want to have, you know, a very thick consistency of a liquid. Now, the second experiment that I have is really super easy. Um, I'm not going to be able to show you the entire experiment here because one of the materials that you would need would be a triple beam balance. And I don't have that at home. I have to wait till I can get back into my classroom to be able to do that. But what you do, you take two different balloons and these balloons you can get at the Dollar Tree. These are, this has 12 and I think because they have happy faces on them and that's why only 12 of them are for a dollar. But then you have 25 that you can have that's for a dollar. So this is a, an experiment where I would definitely have my students working with in pairs. Um, both of them would be working, practicing the triple beam balance. That's something that we go over in the beginning of the school year. So I like to keep working on those measurement skills because a lot of times they'll forget how to use that. So the two students working together cooperatively can remind each other how they, what they have to do, those steps into measuring using the triple beam balance. But you're going to take two balloons, um, and in order to make sure that, you know, the students a lot of times will think different colors could possibly cause um, something to be different. So I like to use two of the same balloons, so I'm gonna use two of the happy faces. You know, if you use this, these are all the same size, it's just that they're different colors. Um, you want to find the mass of the balloons. So what you're going to, what you would do is, again, I have a worksheet that I would give to my students. Um, and the materials would be the triple beam balance, a deflated balloon, and an inflated balloon. And to inflate the balloon, very simply, the students love doing this, you just have to blow it up. So one of them you're going to leave deflated like this, and then the other one you'll blow up. Probably two big breaths are, is fine if you want to give your students something to aim for um, so that they're not popping it. You know, if you want to do three or whatever, but you, usually I want to give them something to aim towards and then just tie it so that it's closed. So then you have the two balloons and what the students will do is they will find the mass of each balloon. So they'll first put the deflated balloon on top of the triple beam balance, you know, ahead of time, they want to make sure that it's zeroed out and that it's going to give them an accurate measurement. And then they will find the mass of the inflated balloon. Sometimes I will give them a tiny piece of tape because the inflated balloon sometimes may move. I have the fan on right now, so it's definitely going to move. Um, but if they can't get it to rest nicely, on that triple beam balance, then just a teeny tiny piece of tape. It's not going to really affect the mess. I mean, maybe a gram. Um, but what they will see is there's going to be a discrepancy between the two masses. The mass of the balloon that has the air in it is going to be larger. And that this is going to allow them to see that air has mass, air takes up space. So this is a great activity for them to be able to see this in action because a lot of times they, because air is invisible, they don't really think of it as having mass. Um, and then again, on here, they would make some observations of each. So what does the deflated balloon look like? They can write it down or illustrate it. Um, and then you, I would ask them to fill in what state of matter the deflated balloon, inflated balloon, and the trip beam balance are. Again, I just wanna keep hitting, giving them different objects and being able to identify what state of matter that is. And then it asks, what is the difference in mass between the two balloons? And that's where they would have to, once they found what the mass of each balloon was, they would then subtract the larger number from the smaller number to find what the difference is. And then they have to answer why. Why was there a difference? And that's where they're going to relate that the air in the inflated balloon had given this more mass. So I hope that you like these two activities. Um, I'm going to come on probably next week and give you a couple more ideas, but let me know what you think about these so far. 
And if you are interested in the worksheets that I use with my students, I will include that link in the comments and you can feel free to take a peek at that. Um, thank you for tuning in. Have a great night.